In this patient, we're going to use the rotation medical bioinductive implant to graft two very large areas of tissue deficiency in this patient with calcific tendonitis involving both the supraspinatus and infraspinatus tendons. So here we can see the volume of the deposit coming out. We're going to go ahead and evacuate all of this deposit, but unfortunately this is going to leave us with a very deficient tissue volume. So we're going to use a standard suture anchor to affix the tendon back down to the bone, but then we're going to go ahead and augment this to reduce our risk of failure utilizing the bioinductive implants. You can see I've got my suture anchor in place. In this case, we're going directly on top of our supraspinatus first. Those are our biceps tendon markers in the background. So we've got good position for our tissue deficiency, but you can see we're not going to be able to cover the lesion in its entirety, so it's going to require a second implant. So we'll use our absorbable staples to secure our position anterior and medial. And then we'll use our non-absorbable staples to secure ourselves laterally. So here we're down over the lateral edge of the humerus. We'll insert the non-absorbable staples. We've got excellent compression and position of our first graft. Now the second graft, its position is slightly more difficult to place because as we move along the side of the humerus, we're not parallel with the tendon. So we have to take an approach utilizing our previous portal by first rotating our arm. And then secondarily, we're going to fixate the edge of our graft distally and then rotate our hand to slide the implant down a little bit further along the lateral edge of the rotator cuff. And then at the same time, as we insert our staples, we're going to use our staple inserter to push the graft further down into the position that we're trying to place the graft in. So here you can see we're pushing the graft down into the position we want it to. We can rotate it, and then we'll insert our staple to secure that position. So here we're utilizing the trocar as well as the staple inserter to push the graft down into the position we want. And now that we've managed to secure the rotation angle that we like, then we'll put our non-absorbable staples laterally. Something else to recognize is that we're at an angle, so we're going to rotate the arm again to make sure we're optimizing our angle. We're also going to try and bring the graft around the edge at the lateral aspect of the humerus as far as we can to get good coverage of our footprint. Once we've got that secured, then we're going to go ahead and bridge our grafts together first with our non-absorbable staple. So out lateral, we've done this, and then we'll bridge our grafts with an absorbable staple and complete our repair of a massive tissue deficiency in this rotator cuff from calcific tendonitis.